The Hadley Learning Community is a £60 million PFI development in Telford, Shropshire. An extended school with integrated primary and secondary phases, it's a cutting-edge facility designed to be the school of tomorrow, today. The vision for the HLC is to provide learning opportunities for an entire community. It's a specialist engineering college in an area which has experienced job losses as Telford's manufacturing industry has declined. Millions have been spent on equipping the school with the latest technology. And it's not just what happens in the classroom that's important. The HLC aims to provide its students with a safe and secure environment. CCTV cameras will provide physical security, but a lot of resources have been put into supporting pupils' emotional needs and into writing a behaviour management policy. In this particular space where you've got a lot of people, they can be under continuous observation. A lot of our youngsters come in with an incredible amount of excess baggage, and if you've got that baggage, you're taking it into the classroom, you don't want to sit down and write. Schools are bound to reflect the social conditions that surround them. Increasingly, they have security features that can make them resemble a prison. CCTV cameras scan the perimeter. Deadly looking metalwork prevents people climbing over fences. The dilemma facing school leaders is that they have to make schools safe without creating an oppressive atmosphere for staff and pupils. The principal of the HLC wants a security system that doesn't compromise the school's ethos. I actually want the general public to come in, I want the pensioners to be coming in and using the library and we might have a group of students in there because I think that's all part of breaking down the barriers that are building up in our society. So I, I have a sort of pragmatic view really and that we have cameras everywhere, you know, there's a huge amount of cameras particularly in the community areas where the general public will be so we are monitoring people. If anything untoward happens, we can pick it up instantly. But I think you have to operate the place in, in the right ethos and the right spirit of partnership with the community, and that's what it was always designed to be. As an extended school, the HLC opens at 7 o'clock in the morning and doesn't close until 10 o'clock at night. Community facilities and an adult learning centre mean visitors coming and going throughout the day, so it's a challenging site. Security starts at the front door. This is where the students are going to come in in September. They'll walk in here. This is a nice big area for them to circulate in. There'll be some seating around. And then they'll come towards these pair of doors. And at the beginning of the day, and at the end of the day, they'll be open for students to move in and out of the secondary phase. But at other times in the day, they'll be locked and staff will be able to go through using their electronic key fob. And then the students will come in here and then they're into the main part of the secondary phase. To exit from the building, you need another swipe card. But because it's an exit, we have to have an emergency release button in the event of the failure of the swipe. And the door will be automatically released and then you can escape. Eventually, there'll be 1,200 students moving through this area. So, A, it's important that they're secure once they get in the building, but B, we control the movement of students in and out of the building. So, yeah, it's a major thoroughfare. But they can go straight through, sit in the forum before school starts, go into the restaurants, and the whole idea is to move them through this area quite quickly. I don't want them hanging around in here. The exterior of the building is totally covered by CCTV cameras. The precise number is confidential, but some have the ability to recognise faces and registration numbers. The HLC's leadership team and InterServe's FM manager have a big input into the system's design. So somebody in uh, FM suite looking at the security and getting a phone call from member staff saying, we think there's somebody who shouldn't be out there, they will be able to zoom in on that. Yeah in that area and probably be able to ID them fairly 
Or, easily. Or, I would think so, very easily. The, the definition of the, cam the modern camera is tremendous. Yeah. For some obscure reason, a lot of vandalism tends to be constructed by the entrance to the school. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then it would have made more sense to have an overlapping here so we could actually get face definition. Oh, I, I think you're, you're in an area where you can probably pick somebody up, you see. You're very close to that. I mean, you're, 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 you're talking about quite a zoom there. Whatever direction that person is looking, mm -hmm. both of them get would up. pick the back and the front up. You know, mm -hmm. So you, you get it from both sides in that sort of yeah. area. It's quite and it's not just about keeping people out, it's about who can be allowed in. We need a management plan for visitors, staff, children, so that we all, we all understand before we open who can use what access points to the building. I'm just concerned about staff turning up to a gate that they can't get through. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But all, 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 all our staff, though, will have passes, which means they can park anywhere yeah. and come through a community and they've only got to walk around to primary because they'll yeah. be able to get through all the secure yeah. internal doors. Yeah. The facilities manager and the school leadership team can view the output of CCTV cameras both outside and inside the school. Many of them can be controlled remotely. They're very discreet, aren't they? Mm. Very discreet. In this particular space where you've got a lot of people, they can be under continuous observation without thinking they are security mm. cameras, you know, they're within a, a sort of prison environment. It's just, it's just subtle, really. More than anything else. And there's one there as well? Yeah, good coverage. Good coverage, yeah. And they'll never realise that those are cameras. They'll just think they're some sort of lighting fitting or something. And if we look down the corridor at the far end, you can see, you see one. another one, Yeah. then you've just got continuous visibility down each finger. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I know in some schools they've put cameras into the classrooms, but I was never into that philosophy, because I think if you can just see them, it, it's corridors and circulation areas that are always your problems. Yeah, you know, what's actually happening in a classroom is very rarely an issue. InterServe's engineers had to develop a site which could be both secure and accessible to pedestrians and to vehicles. They also have to wrestle with meeting the needs of the different phases of the HLC. Restricting access to the mainstream schools had to be married with more open access for the special school. At a planning meeting, things get a bit tense. I can't stress we have a tremendous amount of visitors. This will have huge use. You'll have parents coming in and out during the day at any point. You'll have professionals coming in yeah. at any point, and they will come to that main entrance. There. No, well, well, no, well, well, anyone no. can. There's a barrier. Is it open then? No, no there's a barrier. Because we've got no, because we've got mainstream kids on Who the playing fields. We can't have anybody Sorry. going down that drive. It's not that simple. Yes, but you can't have or, school that you can't have visitors get to. No, but no, no. You, can't, you can't have visitors. Yeah. Well, why does a professional like a doctor who's perfectly healthy have to go right outside your door? Why can't they go in through the main reception? <coughs> because then we, this is the we've said all along that will not be our entrance to the school. So, so we have to have some way of letting those people. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can let them in, but you need to be clear who's coming in and out yeah. of that drive because they could just, you know, abduct a secondary school mm -hmm. pupil before we know what's going on. Because your issues are different, because your kids are secure yeah, there, mine right. won't be. Yeah. As a school, our strongest philosophy is that we want to welcome people, we want people to come in, we want parents to feel that they can access, so we don't want it to be like a fortress, but it has to be safe for the children, and it's finding a compromise between those things. And as Jill rightly says, that, that actually takes into account the needs of the other students on the campus. The HLC is designed to provide not just good learning environments, but also to be a place where staff and pupils can be relaxed and contented outside the classroom. Light and airy spaces create an atmosphere which helps alleviate stress. Pupils can be affected by difficulties outside of school life. A lot of our youngsters come in with an incredible amount of excess baggage. And if you've got that baggage, you're taking it into the classroom. You don't want to sit down and write, you know, an essay on whatever you're being asked to write an essay on. You are not going to apply yourself to any kind of science experiment because you're only going to be partly there. Pupils who are unhappy often display poor behaviour and a new school must decide how it will deal with this. The leadership team meet to agree a behaviour policy and to establish how the student support team will remove teachers from the front line. Setting out the consequences for pupils behaving badly 
was dealt with first. For my, mild, mild infringement mm. is a warning. Mm. Second is, you know, you'd be asked to move. Yeah, just for a few minutes. Just for a few minutes, you say. they refuse? Well, you then go on to the next one, don't you? You, you need to send for... Send for yeah. And any particular lesson, but a threshold that's passed with an individual child where you think, now, I've, I've used my classroom strategies a bit, I have mm. to go on to the mm. formal. But it's getting that judgment call right for teachers and not employing it too early. Right, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I work in a school currently where their system, it's a secondary school, and their system essentially is that escalation is how red the teacher's face is. And once they reach a critical point, they, they shout for SMT, and mm -hmm. SMT comes in, removes the child. Staff have to remember, they have to teach that child again. Yes. You know, they <coughs> cannot no. allow the situation to develop, which means by which they're going to be generous grant to us and saying, I refuse to have that child in my life, you know, which is the age-old, you know, park it, I don't want to have to deal with it. Exactly. I just want to be clear on some of the systems. So we've got student support managers who are saying they would phone the pastoral support office and if there was a problem in a lesson and somebody would come and remove that child. Are we going to have a senior member of staff on duty throughout the school day as support? I, th I think so, yes, yeah. but it's not rooted by reception that Mr. Topping on, you know, Dr. Yeah, because all we ever hear at Alton Park is Mr. Boyer <coughs> to Mr. Boyer to Mr. Boyer to. You know, I, I think you, like, are, you just can't yeah, do You are the support of the support. Leah, can you talk us through what's going to happen here? Take 14 off the slides. We've got some funny numbers. You Classroom teachers will have the student support team to ease the burden of dealing with behaviour issues. If the students feel supported and cared for and that when things go pear-shaped in their lives, we're there to pick them up and, like we often say, don't we, put them back on the bus, you know, and, and actually believe in them and feel they are of value to our organisation, then, you know, we can, we, all th we can achieve great things. The system aims to provide that vital component, time. You cannot deal with some of the complex issues within five minutes or ten minutes and there's nothing worse if someone is talking to you um, about whatever is concerning them and you're looking at your watch thinking, oh gosh, I've got another appointment, oh gosh, I've got to, you know, that's the worst thing you could possibly do. That child has got to feel that you're there for them when they need you. I think, I think it's important that the children have adult time in the organisation and the tendency, certainly in the, my career, has been for them to have adult teaching time but very, very little adult support, mentoring, whatever you want to call it, time, and we've, we've worked hard and the funding has been there to make that very much a priority at, at HLC. While the leadership at Hadley is sensitive to the causes of bad behaviour, there's a strong policy that teaching will never be compromised. Those students for whom it's a bad day, it's a bad week, they need help and support, we can do that, but the main business carries on. And that, that I think our staff, our teaching staff, will find a great freedom that they've never had in the job. We'll have the resources, we will have the time to spend, and it doesn't matter how long that is, we will have that specific time to be able to devote to the youngsters and their parents. So, safety and security are high priorities at the HLC, but it'll be the students who'll be the judges of whether or not the school leadership have got it right. We will have to ask the children this as, as time goes by about how well, how safe and secure they feel. But uh, it's our aspiration that they, they do feel so.